reversible and irreversible processes. Let's start with the gas at state 1 with a certain pressure, volume and temperature. We are going to understand reversible and irreversible processes by moving this gas system to another state through these two different routes. To start with, it is under equilibrium state. In other words, it is under reversible condition. Actually nothing is happening. That is the true reversible process. Can the gas go to another state under this condition? I mean, can it change its state without any change in pressure or temperature? Stupid question, right? In principle, changing a state is never possible in a truly reversible manner. But the interesting fact is that in practice, we can do processes that are extremely close to it. While understanding it, we'll also understand what is an irreversible process. Let's start with comparing a few processes here. Initially, the gas is at state 1. First, imagine removing the mass from above. The gas expands rapidly till the stopper. Second, the mass is broken into two halves and then only one half is removed. The gas expands to the same volume. But the most important thing here is that the gas does some work in the process. That is lifting the remaining one half of the mass. Now break the mass into three pieces and imagine removing only one piece. The gas does even more work, lifting two thirds of the mass. Note that the velocity at which the piston moves gets lower and lower. Let's see these three together to appreciate the velocity difference. Now in these cases, which one does the most work? It's easy to say the third one. But look at the final states. The pressure acting on top of them is not the same. So let's go for a slightly different comparison. Take the third case alone. Let's achieve the same final pressure but through a different process. The initial mass on top of these two scenarios are the same. In one case, the mass is made of three big chunks. In the other case, it is broken into small stone-like pieces. Let's say we are going to remove one third of the mass from both of them so that it goes to another state with the same pressure. Consider no friction during the movement of the piston. The important difference is this. In the first one, one chunk is removed in one go. In the second one, it is done stone by stone. So this is the question that will throw more light on the reversible and irreversible processes. Among these two cases, in which one the gas does the maximum work? Don't consider the work done in the removal process outside the system. There are means to take care of it. Consider only the work done by the gas during the expansion. Let's analyze them one by one. Consider the first case, mark state 1 in PV space. During the transition from state 1 to 2, the gas was not in equilibrium. That means it didn't have a uniform pressure or temperature during the transition. Somewhere the pressure was high, somewhere the pressure was low. It took a while for the gas to settle in a new state, the state 2. So the process here is non-equilibrium in nature. Its other name is irreversible process. Now let us try to have the process path in PV space. We know that in PV space, each point represents only equilibrium set of values. But we can use a dotted line path like this to represent irreversible process. Because we have some clues now. When the mass is removed, the pressure from the top drops to P2 and then the expansion occurs against it. Let's calculate the work done. For work done, we have been using P delta V type of formula. But we can also make use of the PV space. What does this area represent? The height multiplied by the width, which is the area for this rectangle, is P2 multiplied by the volume change V2 minus V1, which is basically P delta V. Therefore, area under a curve in PV space is work done. Let's see the other case. Let's say we remove the same one third of the weight, not in one go, but stone by stone. When the first stone was removed, the pressure drops and the volume expands similar to the irreversible case, but only to a tiny degree. For further removal of stones, we have these states 
and eventually the state too. Now imagine instead of stones, if we have sand like grains, if we remove the mass grain by grain, the process of course would take much longer time, but we would have achieved all these states along this line. Those are nothing but equilibrium points which obey the ideal gas law. By this process, we have achieved a change in the state from 1 to 2, but through steps which are extremely close to reversible process. In a reversible process, the size of the sand grains is in principle zero. Here we have a size that approaches zero. This process has a special name, quasi-static process. In future, we may use the word reversible process which actually means quasi-static process because that's the only practical means of doing a reversible process. The path can be represented with full confidence in the PV diagram. Unlike the irreversible case, here at each step, the gas achieves a stable equilibrium, a uniform pressure and temperature. So let's use a green line. Remember, in irreversible case, once a single chunk of mass is removed, nothing is in our control. The system eventually settles at the state 2. No equilibrium state in between state 1 and 2 is accessible in the irreversible process. In reversible case, every point in the green line, which are equilibrium states, are accessed by the system. If we want, we can keep the system at any state between 1 and 2. Fine. Let's see how to calculate the work here. To calculate the work done, imagine the process of removing stone by stone again. When the first stone is removed, the work done is this area PDV. Similarly, for all the stones, we have this total area. When the sand grains are used, we will have this kind of area. And when the size of the grains get smaller and smaller, we would achieve the area under this curve exactly. So that is the work done which can be obtained by integration. The most important thing to note here is that the work done in the reversible case is higher than that in the irreversible case. A related concept is exergy. We have seen that when a system goes from one state to another, it can do work. Is there a limit to that work? The answer is yes. The work in a reversible process is not just more than that in the irreversible case, it is the maximum possible work. Any process, as long as it is reversible, is the maximum possible work. Remember, we can reduce the irreversibility by reducing the size of the mass to ever more finer grains of sand. The limit of that is the reversible case, and we achieve the maximum work in that limit. So the maximum possible work is also called as exergy. In the irreversible process, it is not possible to achieve this because some work is lost. So we can say exergy destruction occurs. In the video on adiabatic processes, we'll talk about what is this lost work in more detail. Later, we'll also realize that exergy destruction corresponds to what is called as entropy production. While minimizing the exergy destruction may be the interest for mechanical engineers to make more efficient engines, chemists or materials engineers bother about entropy production to understand chemical reactions and phase transformations. But both are essentially about the extent of irreversibility. The more the irreversibility, the higher the entropy production or exergy destruction. That is the core idea of classical thermodynamics, which is very, very useful. Let's hold on. We have some distance to go to understand what is entropy production. See you in the next video.